Hi, I am Jennifer Purcell, and welcome to my podcast, Living with an Invisible Learning Challenge, where we will discuss, discover, and learn more about the challenges and triumphs of those with NLD and other learning challenges. I do have a website for this podcast, and it is called livingwithnld.com. I also have a Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter account for the podcast. They are all under the same name, which is Living with NLD. I also have a YouTube channel for the podcast, which can be found by Googling the title of the podcast, which is Living with an Invisible Learning Challenge. I would like to tell you about a nonprofit that I use for my research for this podcast. It is called The NBLD Project, and I use their blog for my research. They are a nonprofit that is based in New York and is trying to get NVLD back on the DSM, and they provide many resources for people with NVLD on their website. I'll provide you with the website for them in the podcast description. All proceeds from the ads on this podcast will be donated towards the NVLD project. Please feel free to explore the other topics on the podcast, and hopefully you will learn something new from them. I hope you enjoy today's episodes. I'm fundraising again for the NBLD project. They are an organization who helps people with NLD and their loved ones by providing more resources for people with NLD, getting NLD back on the DSM by doing more research on it and providing support groups for people with NLD. And they also work on doing more research on NLD so that there is more information out there for people to read and understand about NLD. And the fundraiser that I'm doing for them has a goal of 1,500. Now I have $455 for the NBLD project fundraiser. I've raised $325 and it is on Facebook. I will provide the link for you in the podcast description so that you can go there and read more and contribute if you feel called to. And thank you to everybody who has contributed so far. I appreciate your contribution and I look forward to seeing the results. The next Facebook chat for people with NBLD and the people who support them and also people with other learning challenges like ADHD will be in January on the third Saturday, which is going to be January 15th and that will be at 10 a.m. Pacific time zone and it usually goes until 1130. Sometimes I end it sooner depending on my schedule of the day and basically that is a group where you can talk about anything you want to and it is a safe space for you to talk about challenges related to the learning disability that you have or related to your life. And I invite you to come to it by emailing me at livingwithnld at gmail.com or going to livingwithnld on Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter and letting me know that you are going to be coming by messaging me. Thank you. And again, it is in January on the 15th, which is the third Saturday of the month at 10 a.m. Pacific time zone. Thanks. To access the testimonials, there are two ways. There's a testimonial page with the full quotes, and then there is a slideshow on the home page with excerpts of the longer ones and the short ones. On the last uh, image of the testimonial quote with Julia's quote, you can click on it and it will take you to the testimonial page where it shows you all of them with the full quoted testimonials. I did it that way because I wanted it to be easier to read on the home page since some of them were a little longer than a testimonial usually is. And then 
I wanted to make sure that you could see the whole testimonial on the testimonial page. So I hope that makes sense. If it doesn't, you can email me at livingwithanaldi at gmail.com and I will try to show you how to access it. Thank you. Hope you're having a good weekend. Bye. Hello, so today you will hear the first part of Ryan's interview with me on his life with NVLD. He is from Philadelphia and moved to Florida recently this year. And he is also a project social ambassador for the NVLD project. And as a project social ambassador, you write blogs quarterly and you help promote the NVLD project and you also help fundraise for them, and you also may appear in some of their promotional videos. Okay, good morning, everybody. So today I'm going to interview Ryan and talk to him about his life with MVLD. And I will let him begin by introducing himself and let him um, tell you what, where he is from if he wants to and what he does. Hi guys, my name is Ryan Lundy. I live in Pennsylvania in Lafayette Hill. Uh, that's in the suburbs about a half hour from Philadelphia. Uh, what I do now is I work as a special education teaching assistant at a special education school. And I also do community integration for individuals with disabilities. I take them in the community and do life skills with them. And I help out with um, recreation programming for individuals with disabilities. Thanks, Ryan, for introducing yourself. And for the, those who might not have listened to the previous episodes of the podcast, my name is Jennifer Purcell, or I also go by my pen name, which is Ever-Changing Butterfly. I am a administrative assistant at my mom's church. I also do most of the tech work there by managing their website and their app and the podcast that I created for her church. And I also help with cleaning the building when we have very small in-person events with our band on Sundays, which are, of course, approval with COVID-19. We social distance and we wear masks. And um, I just help clean the places of the building where we are in on those days so that it's sanitized. And I'm also the host of the podcast, obviously. And so, and just in case you guys were curious, I used to work with individuals who uh, have autism and I was helping them out like Ryan does by helping them be more independent in their life. And I, I do miss that work because I really liked working with those individuals and um, really liked helping them have a better life. Um, so the first question for Ryan is what he, when he was uh, diagnosed with NLD. Yeah, thank you for asking. Um, when I was diagnosed, I was diagnosed at the age of five years old. Uh, my parents knew something was off, but they didn't know what it was. So they got me tested. And then through getting tested, I became diagnosed with NLD, or I like to call it NVLD, because most people think um, it's nonverbal learning disability, but I am verbal since I'm talking right now <laughs> and I do communicate verbally. So people get that mixed up. And yeah, I was diagnosed at five. I went 
to the testing process. And that's when I was diagnosed. Yeah, I, I appreciate you sharing that, Ryan. I think for me, probably the reason I was diagnosed later at age 19 was because I was um, homeschooled. So I was in a um, different kind of education system than most children. And um, my parents actually did have me tested for um, something, I mean, for something sooner than uh, 19, but there wasn't enough for the enough results for uh, a diagnosis. So uh, I had it, I guess you could say I had it redone uh, when I was 19. Um, but I would argue that it wasn't really redone because I don't remember what I had done when I was a child. Um, and uh, when I was in, in high school, I always kind of had a hunch that I was different from everybody else in my family. Um, and I would say that hunch just came from comparing myself to my brother and realizing that it took me longer to do certain things like doing math or um, trying to write an essay and always finding myself uh, in tears whenever I was trying to do that and be like, just frustrated and be like, I can't get this. Um, and um, the next question for Ryan would be, if he knows, sometimes this isn't always easy to figure out, but um, sometimes you're, when they test you, they tell you what caused it, uh, but I'm not sure if they told you that or not. Not test, tell me what caused it. Um, my parents just knew I was a little off. Um, and they just said that you had it. So there wasn't any real signs. They just tested me and said I had it. Yeah, I, I was, uh, I can relate to that because um, I would say that it was pretty clear for me too when I was tested and um, they said I was born with it and I have a feeling my dad has it too because um, he was adopted and we don't know that much about his um, biological family um, because back when he was adopted, they uh, didn't keep really good records like they do now. Um, so that might be a piece of um, information for that, for, for at least me, because um, sometimes when I observe my dad in the eyes of somebody who has an LD, I'm like, yeah, he might have it too, but he hasn't done the testing. So he hasn't, he doesn't have a diagnosis. Um, so I'm just, you know, looking at it through my own eyes. Um, so for Ryan, um, if you wouldn't mind telling us, how do you feel about having an LD? Sure. Well, some days are easier than others. Um, I finally opened it up to my coworkers, which I would like to share this with them. And I shared another one with them that I was on, another podcast. Um, it took me till this year to really uh, open up to people about it. I was always hesitant to tell people um, whether it be employing, um, applying for a job or coworkers, because all the coworkers would always think, you know, I'm good. I am positive. I help out. I'm friendly. And I'm smiling. So this is the transition year that I finally decided to open up and start doing, being on people's podcasts and getting the message out there about NVLD. Yeah, I can relate to what you're saying too with that. Um, I usually hesitate to tell um, somebody like, 
a friend or somebody, um, you know, at my mom's church who may not, um, who may know me, but may not know that I have NBLD. Um, because, you know, it, I would say for me, it's not very obvious that I have it because probably because I've worked really hard to overcome or master some of the challenges that um, most people have when they have an, an BLD, um, like the math and the writing and the physical challenges. And I think I've done quite well at that, but I know sometimes when I'm you know, trying to do math in my head, it, it's, it's still difficult for me. So, you know, I'm not saying that it's a piece of cake now. It's not, um, but it's easier than it was. You know, I don't cry anymore. I can tolerate it and I don't hate math anymore because I've taught myself some, new, some tricks about, to get around it. Um, I definitely relate to the math piece. Yeah. Um, Math has always been a struggle for me, and I would get very frustrated with it too, like you were saying. And it's I would always need tutors, and I just want to understand why they just couldn't teach us like the practical stuff that we needed. They always would teach us like the algebra, geometry. Like I'm like I want the practical stuff. Um, even the practical stuff is hard, but like I, my mom or my mom would always help me with when we go to the store. Uh, what's the better buy and the percentage off and reading the labels uh, to see which which is cheaper so I can relate to that yeah I I figured you would and that actually goes into the next question with the challenges of um NBLD and math is one of them and if you want to try to name any other ones that you may have, you can. Sure. Um, another challenge would be social cues. Social yes. cues meaning um, jokes, um, storylines, reading comprehension. I, I always need to reread re, re things. And sometimes I would have to ask my parents like what happened in the movie, I don't understand that. Could they explain that to me? Um, and it's hindered me because sometimes when I was out with friends or I would go to the movies with friends and they would ask me like what happened, I would have to say, I'm not sure. Um, I would feel really embarrassed. And also sometimes like with my sister, she would always get things and I wouldn't get things. so those social cues. Yeah, I can definitely relate to social cues as well. I can think of an example where last night we were just watching um, Stephen Colbert. We like to watch him for news because uh, he often makes it funny and light. And um, he was using, um, forget word he used right now, but oftentimes if he uses a word that um, I don't have in my vocabulary. I have to pause it and ask my parents what it means because I want to be able to understand what it means in that context. And, um, you know, like you were saying with the movie, uh, with the movies and your friends, sometimes they had asked you for help and you couldn't help them because of your parents not being there. So I can relate to that piece with that. And I would say with the social cues, um, what I've done with that is usually when I watch TV, I don't do this as much as I used to because I've gotten better at it. But what I used to do is I would try to um, watch the body language of the actor or actresses on TV and try to see if I was um, understanding or comprehending it correctly based on what they were talking about. And if I wasn't, I would pause it and I would ask my parents or my brother 
And that actually really helped because um, sometimes I was spot on, sometimes I wasn't. And um, they would be willing to help me with that. And um, what's also really good is if you do that with like TV shows that you've seen before is trying to do that with the sound off and, you know, just do it based on the body language. And that could be really difficult for somebody who has in VLD. Great idea. I would, I've never thought about that. And I would have to definitely want to do that because I'm always having to ask and I don't want to have to rely on my parents for understanding. I mean, it's a good thing once in a while, but not every time they'll get annoyed with it and or ask my sister. She'll especially get annoyed with me because she gets annoyed with me easily over small things. So if I can eliminate that and show that would also show more independence, which everybody wants. Exactly. Yeah. I, I can relate to the independence too. You know, I, I've been getting more independent this year and this past year with being able to, um, you know, be uh, debt free with the um, small amount of credit card debt I had. And I say small because I want to compare it to uh, what I can imagine more people might have because of COVID or because of student debt. Um, and, um, you know, being able to pay it off was, was a good thing. So I was able to start saving for things. And um, that made me feel more independent because it was like, yay, now I can, you know, start working towards some goals I've had for a long time of saving for um, a security deposit or retirement or emergency funds for when I may not be working um, full time or um, saving for uh, a new car or um, saving for um, the website for the podcast so that when I am living on my own, I can still pay for that. Um, so things like that. Um, so yeah, I can relate to the independence piece too. Um, so since we're talking about family, um, if you want to, you can uh, share how your family helps you with your uh, challenges or how your friends might help too. Sure. My family does a lot and I have to give them credit. Um, my parents do more than my sister, but my sister still plays a vital part in my life. Uh, my parents, uh, right now they make me dinner every night and they I pick it up. So that's important, you know, you gotta have dinner. They always want me to start, they don't want me to go to supermarket. They always, in times of COVID, they want me to always have food and a nice place to live, which I do pay my rent. Um, they always help me get tutors, therapists. They spend a lot of money on me. Um, and also they spend a lot of money on me and because I'm always changing my mind about what I want to do or a certification or do I want to go back to school. So they've always supported me in that way. They, they put a lot of their hard time and money and time too, meaning on the weekends, hanging out with me, doing going out to a lot of dinners, which also costs a lot of money. So they sacrifice their social life in high school. Um, with me. So, and my sister also, she was there always to say, you're doing great. Don't beat yourself down. And my parents always said, um, especially my mom, always be present in the moment, be happy what you have. There's people worse living situations than you. So I definitely give them credit and I thank them and I'm glad to have blessed and vowed parents that are hardworking, that will do anything for me. And also my sister will do anything for me. Because later in life, when my parents are not here, my parents did secure a special needs trust fund for me. 
and that my sister will be under. So she will be a key part of me down the line too. Yeah, I um, can definitely relate to what you said about that. I also have tremendous support from my family and from my brother. Um, my parents, it, you know, I don't know what I would do without my support system. Um, my um, good, some good examples would be when I was in college, my, um, my mom, she, bless her heart, she um, was able to um, help me with um, writing essays by, um, uh, for the last two years of high school, she did, uh, not high school, college, sorry, um, she did that. And um, she did that because she wanted to help me. And she, since she's a minister, she had experience uh, with doing that and um, with the writing. And so I still wrote the essays, but she would help me by proofreading them. And I think one of the most helpful tips she taught me was to read the essay out loud because sometimes my brain would fill in a missing word if I just read it silently to myself and I'd be like, oh yes, I am missing the word you there or whatever that word would be. And I'd be like, oh, I do need that word. So that was definitely helpful. And um, being a sociology major, basically every assignment I had was an essay. So that was really helpful. Um, and when I was in college, um, my brother was living up in the Bay Area with, uh, not with me, but basically 15 minutes away from me. And we would hang out on the weekends and do fun things together. So he also took time away from his um, life, but you know, he, he did that because he wanted to, you know, we've been best friends since the day I was born, you know, he, which is unusual for siblings. Um, we've never fought. We, if we, it, you know, if we disagree on something, we just agree to, we agree to disagree. Um, so I, you know, that, like I said, that's not typical. Um, so I'm, I'm very thankful to have that relationship with my brother. And um, I would say as we've grown more, it's actually become closer uh, than it was in the beginning, which is really cool. Um, and um, it, was, it was nice to be able to go to a college where he was uh, living close by to be able to uh, have him up there with me and being able to, um, you know, do fun things with him or have him help me in school because he actually went to the same school I was going to. So, you know, that, that helped too. Um, and my friends help out too. Um, they, uh, help with, you know, just letting me talk to them about anything I want to which really is helpful because, you know, if I'm stressed, um, then I can vent to them or I can, um, you know, talk to them about things that I need to talk to them about. Um, and uh, my dad is also very helpful because he's very supportive and um, lets me um, talk to him about anything as well. And, um, you know, my family is very proud of the work that I've done with the podcast and um, just really getting myself out there um, and being really um, open with the audience, even though <laughs> I don't know anybody that I'm talking to, really, um, other than the fact that they have NLD and, um, you know, just, you know, meeting them and 
um, trying to connect with them and uh, help them out. So um, also uh, the next question would be, um, if you think there are any gifts that you might have from having an oldie. I would say the gifts that I have are that I, it has made me stronger, even though there are hindrances. It, it gave me a gift of actually being on podcasts and now being able to spread my story, which I never thought if I didn't have NLD, uh, I would probably not know about NLD or NVLD, as I like to call it. Yeah, it was just it just made me stronger as a person um, to be able to tell my story, and I'm glad I'm here and I can say it. So I would say my gift is to being blessed to have NLD is educating more people about it and talking about it and meeting people that have it now, which I never thought I would meet or. It was never an idea of my mom's like, you should join these Facebook groups. And and now I'm really getting out there and meeting people with NLD and spreading the awareness, which is a gift. Yeah, I agree with you, Ryan. I think that is a gift because, you know, both of us are doing that. We're sp spreading the awareness and edu helping educate people about NVLD and what it is. And I would say that some of the other gifts when people have NVLD is, um, at least this is true for me, is the auditory memory. Um, for me, I'm really good at um, memorizing uh, song lyrics and uh, parts of um, movies. Um, when I, uh, took the tests, I actually found out that, um, that I, ha I think it was, yeah, it was audio memory that it was like on the 99th percentile. And I was like, wow, that's, you know, I was like, how much more gifted can you be than that? <laughs> um, and so I, I guess I told my brother that and he was like, do you understand what that means? I'm like, I think so. He's like, yeah, that means you remember 99% of what people tell you. I'm like, okay, wow. <laughs> so um, not bragging with that. I'm just saying that that I think helps me because, um, you know, people with NLD, like you were saying, they are verbal. So they're able to remember things better, I think, than, may, than some neurotypicals um, because they um, maybe are more attuned to um, the verbal piece um, because they have a hard time with the nonverbal piece. Um, right. But I'm kind of the opposite where like, I don't, I'm, I have a good memory, but I don't remember like song lyrics or uh, movie quotes. Like I have a hard time with movie quotes and where they're from. So I'm, I'm the opposite of you with that. But mm -hmm. the other part, I definitely can relate to, I do have a good memory. I do remember things, but I'm not quite like you the 99 percentile. I don't know what percentile I am, but I do have a good memory. And I'm also, I would like to add, I dive deep into a subject, which is like, I'll put my heart and soul into everything I do, which is a gift that I don't think I, I could have done with that having NVLD, meaning I'll do my research homework, whether to be a, a job or a place I'm going or like a vacation, I will put everything into it to do all the research, which I enjoy doing. 
Right. I, I do that too, Ryan. I'm very passionate about doing research. And I remember when I was a kid, um, I probably did too much research whenever I did a research paper. Um, and, you know, I didn't know I had NBLD back then. And now when I do research for the podcast, I try to limit how much research I do because, you know, if I spent all day doing research, I would never get to the recording of a podcast episode. Um, so um, I can definitely relate to what you said about being passionate about um, research and, you know, it helps because you learn new things and then you um, discover something new and you get excited about it usually. Definitely. Um, sometimes my research goes a little too far, meaning that I will spend longer than I should actually on it. And like you said, if you if you research too much, then you wouldn't be able to do record the podcast. So I can relate to that. Yeah. Um, let's see. As I wrap up, there are some things I would like to share with you. I do have a website for this podcast. It is called livingwithnld.com. I also have a Facebook and Instagram page for this podcast. It is called Living With NLD. I will include the links for those in the description. In conclusion, I would like to hear from my audience. If you know individuals with NLD that I could interview for this podcast, please email me at livingwithnld at gmail.com. What are you interested in learning about NLD? I know I'm not an expert, but I do know I have the living experience of having it. I would like you to practice journaling about your gifts and differences. Also see if there is a way that you can make that difference become easier for you to do than it originally was. Thank you for listening today, and please go to my YouTube channel and subscribe to it. Thank you. Bye.